A blue whale takes its first breath in a world of darkness and water, with its mother pushing it toward the sky. You might think breathing is automatic. You are born, you cry, your lungs fill with air, and that is it. But for a baby blue whale, the first breath is a race against time. Blue whales give birth underwater. The calf arrives tail first, so it does not drown during birth. But the moment it is fully out, it has a problem. Its lungs are still full of fluid, and there is no air down here. So the mother, a one, 100 ton giant, moves into action. She swims beneath her newborn, lifting it gently but firmly toward the surface. Sometimes other females help, forming a living cradle of muscle and bone. The calf, still figuring out its fins, is nudged and guided upward. When they break the surface, that first explosive exhale blasts fluid out of the blowhole. And the first inhale drags cold air into lungs that have never felt the world above the water. It is not just one lesson. In the days that follow, the mother sets the rhythm, diving, rising, breathing. The calf learns when to come up, how long it can stay down, how to match her pace. What feels automatic to you is, for a blue whale, a skill taught by a patient giant in a moving classroom of waves and light. Next time you see a picture of a whale spout, Remember, every breath is part of a lesson that started on the very first day of its life. A lesson in how not to drown on a planet covered in water. And as long as the oceans endure, the stories of these creatures, of jellyfish and anemones, of crabs and octopuses, of manta rays and the great blue whale, will continue to unfold beneath the waves in a world of wonder that lies just beyond our shore. Far from the noise of our cities, there is another world, a world of light and shadow, of color and silence. It begins just beneath the surface of the sea. Sunlight filters down through the waves, turning the water into shifting sheets of blue and gold. Tiny particles drift in the currents, and among them move some of the oldest and strangest animals on Earth. Floating here, with no bones and almost no brain, is a jellyfish. Its body is a simple bell of living jelly, pulsing gently to drive it forward. Below, long trailing tentacles stretch out like threads of glass. They look delicate but they carry thousands of microscopic harpoons loaded with venom. Any small fish that brushes against them is swiftly paralyzed, drawn up to the jellyfish's mouth and dissolved. Jellyfish have no brain in the way we understand it. No heart, no central control. Yet they can sense light, respond to currents, and gather in vast blooms that can darken the water for kilometers. Some are barely larger than a fingernail. Others, like the lion's mane jelly, can have tentacles stretching longer than a blue whale. For over 500 million years, creatures like these have pulsed through the oceans. Long before any dinosaur walked on land, jellyfish were already here, drifting in the darkening seas of a much younger planet. Among them is uh, one of the most extraordinary of all, the tiny Turritopsis jellyfish. When badly injured or stressed, it can reverse its own life cycle, transforming its mature body back into a youthful stage and starting again. In theory, it can do this over and over. An animal that can, in a sense, go backwards in time. Where the sea becomes shallower and the seabed rises towards the light, another kind of drifter takes root and stays. Attached to rock, anchored and still, is the sea anemone. It looks like a flower, a ring of colorful tentacles surrounding a central mouth. But this is no plant. 
Each tentacle is armed with the same stinging cells as a jellyfish. Anything small and careless enough to touch them is swiftly seized and swallowed whole. Yet into this forest of venom, a tiny fish dares to swim. The clownfish. Its bright orange body threads between the deadly tentacles as if they were blades of grass. A special mucus on its skin protects it from the sting, allowing it to live in one of the most dangerous places on the reef. This is a partnership. The clownfish brings scraps of food, cleans parasites from the anemone's tentacles, and chases away intruders. In return, the anemone's poison provides the fish with a fortress, where almost no predator will follow. All along the reef, such alliances shape life. Shrimp that clean the teeth of larger fish, gobies that share burrows with watchful partners, anemones that shelter not only clownfish, but crabs and shrimp as well. The reef is a city of bargains and deals, some forged over millions of years. Where the reef meets the open sand, the mood changes. Here, the tide rises and falls, and life must be prepared to face both sea and air. On a wide tidal flat, the sand begins to move. Dozens of crabs emerge from their burrows, eyes perched on stalks, claws raised and ready. Some are small and round, scuttling sideways in quick, darting runs. Others are more flamboyant. The male fiddler crab, for example, carries one claw that is absurdly large, nearly half his body weight. It is a flag, a weapon and a signal. As the tide recedes, males climb to small mounds and begin to wave. Each rhythm, each flourish, is a message. To attract females, to warn rivals, to stake a claim on a patch of sand. The beach becomes a field of semaphore, a flickering forest of claws. Elsewhere, a decorator crab moves slowly across the sea floor. Its shell is covered in bits of sponge, algae and small animals it has plucked from its surroundings and carefully attached to itself. It is both fashion and defence. By becoming part of the scenery, the crab disappears, hidden in plain sight. High above these scenes of careful deception and noisy display, a shadow passes. At first, it seems only a darker patch of blue, but as we rise higher and higher, the scale of the ocean changes. Waves that once seemed large shrink to tiny ripples. Currents become vast rivers of water flowing between continents. And then, from out of the blue, an enormous shape appears. The blue whale. At up to 30 meters long and weighing more than 150 tons, it is the largest animal ever known to have lived on Earth larger than any dinosaur that ever walked on land. Its heart alone can weigh as much as a small car. A child could crawl through its arteries. Yet this giant feeds on some of the smallest animals in the sea. In polar waters, where cold, nutrient-rich currents rise from the deep, swarms of shrimp-like creatures called krill gather in their billions. The whale dives beneath them, then rises through the mass with its mouth open wide. Its vast throat expands like a parachute, engulfing tons of water and krill. Then, with a mighty push of its tongue, it forces the water out through baleen plates that hang from its upper jaw like a curtain. The krill are trapped inside, swallowed in great mouthfuls. On a good day, a blue whale can consume several tons of these tiny crustaceans. When it surfaces to breathe, it exhales with a column of air and mist that can rise 10 meters into the sky. Its breath is visible proof that something immense lies just beneath the surface of the sea. Far below, where the light begins to fade and colors drain away, another predator hunts with very different tools. 
An octopus glides over the seabed, changing color with each passing rock. Its soft body can squeeze through the narrowest of cracks. Eight flexible arms, lined with hundreds of suckers, explore every crevice. Each sucker can taste and feel, and each arm can move with a degree of independence. The octopus has three hearts and blue blood, but it is its brain that truly sets it apart. It can solve problems, navigate mazes, open screw-top jars, and remember what it has learned. An invertebrate with a mind that rivals some mammals. To escape danger, it can vanish in an instant, either by matching the color and texture of its surroundings, or by exploding into a cloud of ink and jetting away, leaving its attacker confused in the dark. Not far away, a different kind of hunter waits without moving at all. Half buried in sand, only its eyes and claws exposed, lies a small ambush crab. For hours, it may remain still, watching and waiting. Then, the faintest movement, an unwary shrimp, a small fish, and the sand erupts as the crab explodes into action, snapping its prey in powerful claws before sinking back into hiding. In colder waters, along rocky coasts, Larger crabs play a different role. They are scavengers, as well as hunters, cleaning the seabed of decaying matter, breaking it down so that nutrients can be returned to the water. They are, in many ways, the recyclers of the sea. As day fades and the surface darkens, another kingdom awakens. In the open ocean at night, countless tiny animals rise from the deep in what is, by sheer numbers, the largest migration on Earth. Plankton, small fish, squid and crustaceans ascend towards the surface to feed under the cover of darkness. Among them, drifting like a living lantern, is a jellyfish whose body glows with its own light. Flickers of blue and green pulse through its bell. This is bioluminescence, light produced by chemical reactions within the animal's tissues. In the deep sea, where sunlight never reaches, such lights are a language. They can attract mates, lure prey, or confuse predators. A deep sea anglerfish dangles a glowing lure in front of its tooth-filled mouth, waiting for something curious enough to investigate. Other animals flash patterns in complex sequences, perhaps sending messages we have only just begun to understand. Back in the shallower waters of the reef, a sea turtle glides over corals that now look like a city lit from within. Soft corals, plankton, and some fish reflect and scatter dim light in subtle patterns. This turtle may have traveled thousands of kilometers across the ocean, navigating by currents, the Earth's magnetic field, and perhaps even the light of the stars, to return to the very beach where it once hatched. On the sandy bottom, a small group of rays circles in the darkness. One, broad and triangular, with wings that span several meters, is a manta ray. It feeds not on large prey, but, like the blue whale, on plankton. With each graceful flap of its fins, it funnels clouds of tiny animals into its wide open mouth, filtering them from the water as it flies through the sea. Above it, dolphins slice through the waves in tight formation. They hunt as a team, driving schools of fish into tight, shimmering balls. Working together, they take turns to break into the swarm, each grabbing a mouthful of frantic, flashing prey. Their clicks and whistles echo through the water, a constant conversation we are only beginning to decode. From the smallest jellyfish to the largest blue whale, 
From slow-moving crabs on the seafloor to swift dolphins at the surface, every creature in the ocean plays a part in a vast interconnected web. Jellyfish feed on plankton and in turn feed turtles and fish. Anemones shelter clownfish and clownfish defend their hosts. Crabs clean the seabed. Whales fertilize the surface waters with the nutrients they bring up from the depths, feeding the plankton that supports almost all other life in the sea. For hundreds of millions of years, the ocean has been evolving its own solutions to the challenges of life. Strange bodies, unusual partnerships, and remarkable minds. And today, as we peer into this world with our cameras and instruments, we are still only scratching the surface. For every jellyfish bloom we can see, there are countless more drifting in the open oceans. For every crab we watch on a beach, thousands more scuttle unnoticed in the dark. And for every blue whale that breaks the surface with a mighty breath, many more glide through the water unseen. Silent giants crossing entire oceans. This is the blue heart of our planet. A place where ancient lineages meet modern marvels, where the very smallest and the very largest of animals are bound together by currents, light and the endless restless motion of the sea. And as we leave this hidden world beneath the waves, one thing becomes clear. The more we look, the more wonder we find. If you'd like to keep exploring these oceans together, meeting new creatures, hearing new stories, and discovering how extraordinary our planet truly is, please consider subscribing to this channel. Your support helps these stories continue to be told and helps this growing community of ocean explorers reach even more curious minds. Thank you for watching. And until our next journey, remember, there is always more to discover just below the surface.